When rounding to the nearest whole number, does 0 0.499999 repeating round to 0 or 1? I couldn't help but click because after all these years, this type of issue still sparks furious debate. As you can tell, having nearly 800 comments at the time I took this screenshot with only 244 upvotes. This, of course, is a cute variation on the classic question. Does 0 0.9999 repeating equal 1? One. Everybody has heard that this is the case, yet people still regularly wage rhetorical wars about it. If you haven't heard that 0 0.999 repeating is equal to 1, well, it is, depending on who you ask, but yeah, it's 1. But what about rounding 0 0.499999 repeating? Does it round to 0 or to 1? Of course, it depends on how you round. There are different types of rounding, and which rounding should be used depends on the context. One way to round is with what we call the floor function. The floor function just brings a decimal down to the nearest integer. For example, the floor of 2.9 is 2. It just cuts off the fractional part. The floor of 8.01, well, it just cuts off the fractional part. This is equal to 8. Whether we would traditionally round it up like 2.9 or down like 8.01, the floor just always rounds down. Unsurprisingly, another way we can round is with what's called the the ceiling function. The ceiling function brings a decimal up to the nearest integer, filling in the missing part, so to speak. The ceiling of 2.9 is equal to 3, and the ceiling of 8.01 is equal to 9. It just rounds it up. It's like this part of an Oreo cookie. The floor function would round it down to zero Oreo cookies, taking away the fractional part. On the other hand, the ceiling would round it up, filling in the missing cream and cookie half to get one whole Oreo cookie. Thankfully though, the OP has specified the rules where it's supposed to round to the nearest whole number. So not necessarily round up or necessarily round down, but just round to whatever the nearest whole number is. A number like 0 0.4, for example, is 0 0.6 away from one, but only 0 0.4 away from zero, so we would round it down to zero. A number like 0 0.8 is 0 0.8 away from zero, but only 0.2 away from one, so we would round this up to one. For a number like 0 0.49, it's a bit of a close call. It's 0 0.51 away from one, but slightly less 0.49 away from zero. So it's close, but we would round it down to zero. And of course, the difference is even smaller for numbers like 0 0.499 and 0 0.4999. All of these numbers are pretty darn close to halfway between zero and one, but they are just barely closer to zero. So they would all round down to that nearest whole number. But then what of 0 0.49999? repeating. Let's just accept for the moment that this is equal to 0 0.5. Many of you are happy to accept that and understand what it means, and for anyone else, we'll come back to this. But suppose for now that yes, this equals 0 0.5. So what do we round it to, 0 or 1? Well, 0 0.5 is 0 0.5 away from 0 but it's also 0 0.5 away from one. So how do we round it if there is no nearest whole number? The distances are equal. Well, the OP Skelmas seems to think that we should be rounding this number up. And indeed, this is the common convention, even though 0 0.5 is no closer to one than it is to zero. The convention would be rounded up to one. So if 0 0.49999 repeating is equal to 0 0.5, then yeah, it should be rounded up. Now that leaves two questions. Question one, why is the convention to round 0 0.5 up? Why round it up to one when it's no closer to one than it is to zero? And secondly, why is 0 0.4999 repeating equal to 0 0.5? 
I've discussed things like question 2 in rigorous detail previously, links in the description, so today we'll keep it fairly casual. But if you don't know why this is the case, then rest assured you will get an explanation. But let's begin with question 1. Why is the convention to round 0.5? Up. There are several good reasons we might want to round 0.5 up. Imagine an inhospitable alternative reality where the convention is to round 0.5 down to zero. Okay, in this new post-apocalyptic reality, I'm going to show you a few numbers between 0 and 1, but I'm only going to show you the 10th place. And you tell me if they round up to 1 or down to 0. This number, for example, is 0.314, but I'm only going to show you the 10th place. Does it round down or up? Well, of course, it rounds down because it's closer to 0 than it is to 1. Here's your next number. Does this round up or down? Well, it's closer to 1, so of course it rounds up, and it happens to be 0.6412. Here is your next number, 0.1. Does this round down or up? Of course it rounds down, because it's quite a bit closer to 0 than it is 1. The number happens to be 0.103. Here's another number. Does this round up or down? Of course it's closer to 1, so it rounds up. This number is 0.78419. And this number? Of course this number too rounds up. It's 0.9971. Now, what about this number? Well, look around you. The world is on fire. We're in this infernal reality and your mint condition, Burger King, splat calculator, doesn't have any battery. In a world as depraved as this, certainly we round this number down. Ah, uh, but wait a minute. The full number is 0.50001. We should actually be rounding this number up to 1 because it's closer to 1 than it is to 0. The point, of course, is that for all these other numbers, we can accurately round them just from knowing the digit in the tenths place. But if we were to adopt the convention of rounding 0.5 down, then a number like this cannot be accurately rounded by just looking at the tenths place. When we see that 0.5, we know the number is at least one half, but then we would have to check the rest of the digits to see if it's exactly one half, which we've decided we're going to round down, or if it's just a little bit bigger and so should be rounded to one. Following the actual convention in the real world of rounding 0.5 up means that we're good to go after just checking the tenths place. We could also think about things proportionally, although we have to slide our issue up the number line just a bit. Ugh, God, I hate using this side of the ruler for anything other than measuring. It's like I'm coming close to beheading the felt tip of my precious Sharpie. Ugh, I feel horrible for it. Blech, ugh. Here's my number line. Let's say that this is zero, this is one, and then we'll say up here is two. And let's now think about 1.5. Does this round up to two? or down to 1. The problem, of course, is the same. It's 0.5 away from both numbers. But we could think about things proportionally. If we round this up to 2, then the error, in a sense, is 0.5. We're 0.5 away from the true value. But how does that compare to our new rounded value? Well, the error, 0.5, divided by 2, that's actually just 25%. So 25% of the rounded value, that's how much the error is. On the other hand, if we round this number down to one, well, again, the error is 0.5, but 0.5 divided by 1, now that's a 50% error. 0.5 goes into 1 twice, and it goes into 2 four times. So some may think that it is more appropriate then to round a number like this up rather than down. Of course, this exact same line of argumentation would work to prove precisely the opposite in the negatives, where negative 1.5 would be rounded up to negative 1, but you know what, let's not talk about that. One interesting comment on the original thread said, I heard that you round it to the even number. Klutzy Ninja said, where did you hear that? 
Indeed, this may sound exotic to a lot of us. Turns out this is something called banker's rounding and is a way to keep the rounding fair, so to speak. Quickly looking back at the explanation in the comment, not saying at all says that 0.5 rounds down to zero, the even number, but 1.5 rounds up to two, again, the even number. The idea here is that if we imagine we're only rounding the last significant digit of our numbers, the original convention of rounding 0.5 up has an imbalance. Because we know the digits that are rounded down are one, two, three, and four, like 0 0.1 would round to zero, 0 0.4 would round down to zero, and so on. What digits round up? Put on your 10 gallon hats, we know that's six, seven, eight, and nine. And of course, five. And five breaks the perfect balance. We have four digits, which would be rounded down. Note that zero isn't showing up here because if zero is the last significant digit, then we're not actually doing any rounding. So four digits get rounded down, but in our normal convention, five digits get rounded up. To keep things fair, the rounding of five can be made to depend on the previous digit, and that's how banker's rounding works. If the previous digit is even, like the digit zero in 0 0.5, then we round down to that even, so we'd round down to zero. But if the previous digit is odd, like one in 1.5, then we round up to two. Again, we round to the even. What about a number like 0 0.135? If we want to round this to the hundredths place, well, the previous digit is three, so we're going to round up to get to that nearest even of 0 0.1. Four. Whereas if we have something like 0 0.765 and we want to round to the hundredths place, then we would round down because now the nearest even is 0 0.76. Of course, I'm using the word even kind of flippantly here, but hopefully you see what I mean. This way, there's no consistent rounding up of 0.5s that causes a bias in rounded data. Of course, it does create a bias towards even numbers, but that's a bias that's usually usually less important in applications. So there are all sorts of reasons to round 0.5 up, though as we see, not every convention would follow that rule. But assuming we do round it up, and 0.4999 repeating is equal to 0.5, then yes, it should be rounded up to one. But how is it that 0.4999 repeating is equal to 0.5? And on another note, how is it that this shirt with cartoon pigeons on it is a math shirt? Well, if you know, you know. This video is brought to you by my math fashion brand, mathshin.com. You can go there now, link in the description and the pinned comment, and get the pigeonhole principal t-shirt and all sorts of other awesome math products. There's a Tomei's function design, Euler gets another design, 17 square optimal packing, everything you could want. Shirts, hoodies, all that good stuff. Check it out and I'd really appreciate your support. It does seem a little bit paradoxical for 0 0.5 and 0 0.49999 repeating to be the same. After all, they differ in literally every single digit. Well, these repeating decimals are are odd things, and although we expect middle school students to come to grips with them, the underlying mathematics is quite a bit more sophisticated than many students will ever even see, even throughout high school. We know what 0.4 is, it's 4 tenths. Similarly, 0.49 is equal to 4 tenths, and then 9 in the hundredths place, so plus 9 hundredths. These are finite numbers and finite sums, so they're easy to understand and not controversial. But 0 0.4999 repeating is equal to 4 tenths plus 9 hundredths plus 9 thousandths and on and on forever, with the denominators being increasing powers of 10, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, and so on. It's a sum of infinitely many numbers, and assigning a value to an infinite sum is not a trivial task. Furthermore, every number in this sum is bigger than zero, so why wouldn't it just be infinity? I mean, after all, what is something like one plus two plus three and on and on equal to? Is it equal to fish? Is it 
equal to the debt of a single egg to a man who was once owed a dozen? Well, no, of course, this sum gets arbitrarily large. We say it diverges to infinity, and we might even write that it equals infinity, understanding that this is shorthand for the divergent behavior of this infinite sum. But there is a reasonable way to assign a finite value to a sum of even infinitely many terms. Just consider a sequence, for example, an ordered list of numbers, a sequence like this, 1 over 1, and the next number in the sequence is 1 over 2, the next number in the sequence is 1 over 3, and so on. In general, the nth term of the sequence is 1 over n. What are the terms of this sequence approaching? Well, certainly they're getting smaller and smaller. They're approaching zero. For example, the 1,000th term would be one over 1,000, which is very, very small. It's very, very close to zero. This sequence, we say, has a limit. We would say that it converges to that limit, which in this case is zero. The sequence never actually reaches zero, but it does get arbitrarily close, which is to say that we can get as close to zero as we want, as long as we're willing to go far enough out in this sequence. An infinite sum, like our 0 0.4999 repeating, is called a series, and it's connected to a sequence too. In particular, the sequence of its partial sums. The first partial sum is found by just taking the first term of the series. In our case, that's 4 over 10, or as we might prefer to write it, 0 0.4. The second partial sum is found by adding the first two terms in the series, 4 tenths plus 9 hundredths, which is 0 0.49. The third partial sum is found by adding the first three terms, which we know is equal to 0 0.499, and so on. We can go as far as we like into the sequence of partial sums for the number 0 0.4999 repeating. And we might ask, does this sequence of partial sums have a limit? Just like this sequence got arbitrarily close to its limit of zero, does this sequence of partial sums get arbitrarily close to anything? Of course, it certainly does. The numbers in this sequence of partial sums get arbitrarily close to 0 0.5. We can get as close to 0.5 as we like, as long as we're willing to add up sufficiently many terms of this series. So because the partial sums get arbitrarily close to 0.5, we assign the series, and thus the decimal expansion that represents it, a value of exactly 0.5. There are many arguments about this sort of thing, but somehow they almost always seem to completely miss the crux of the issue, which is assigning a finite value to a series. If we are to assign a finite value to this decimal expansion, it has to be 0.5. If you want to object to the assignment of a finite value to an infinite sum, well, I'm sure everybody will be very open and sensitive to your position in the comments section. Coming back to the original post and the second part of the question, would this essentially mean that 0 0.49999 repeating does not technically exist? And the answer is no, it doesn't mean that. 0 0.49999 repeating does exist. It's a convergent series with a sum of 0 0.5. Let me try that again, 0 0.5. If you oppose the assignment of finite values to certain infinite sums, you might contend that 0 0.49999 repeating doesn't exist, but that would be a very non-mainstream take. Lastly, here's a game. What word or phrase in the original post do you think got Skelma's a bunch of downvotes? If you said the word mathematically, then you are right. Luca that Luca below said, is considered mathematically identical is a suspicious number of words to use for this concept. One half is exactly one number. Each property it has is the same as itself. If you round one half up, 
then you round one half up. And the OP's controversial hidden reply explains how 0.4999 repeating and 0.5 are not exactly identical in every possible way. So he used the term mathematically to specify that he meant they're identical in numerical value. See the reception someone gets just for suggesting that it's possible someone might conceive of 0.4999 repeating and 0.5 being distinct in some non-mathematical way. So you can imagine how heated the arguments get when someone won't even concede the numerical equality between these two quantities. Anyway, I certainly believe they're identical, mathematically and in every single way conceivable, and I'd never harbor any thoughts of them being anything other than completely indistinguishable in every single way. I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep a cable cut and unsort the table. If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal. I wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded. Hate the odds that I calculated. Press and pull and pray it. Push it all the way through the whole blue planet. Faded. Psychosomatic habits, why you so, so.